What's your rating? I don't have a rating. Have you ever played in a tournament before? No. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm sure. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 behind-the-scenes secrets about the Queen's Gambit. I knew there were pieces, I knew there was a board. I would say that it's much easier to play chess without the burden of an Adam's apple. The first thing I said to Scott was she needs to have red hair. Like, that was just something imperative to me, um, because I wanted her to stick out like a sore thumb wherever she went. For this list, we'll be looking at little-known reported facts, bits of trivia, and more about the Netflix limited series. What did you think of the show? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. It was originally going to be a movie. Those things are called openings. Is that one of them? Yes. The Queen's Gambit. The Walter Tevis novel The Queen's Gambit, on which the show is based, was almost adapted into a film years ago. I'm going to Cincinnati. See a movie? And late actor Heath Ledger, known for a wide range of roles, from Patrick Verona in 10 Things I Hate About You to the Joker in The Dark Knight, was going to act in and direct it. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Alan Scott got the rights to the book in the 90s. He also worked on creating the new Netflix version. He said Ledger, quote, was passionate about it. He was an intense, interested young man, and I was drawn to him immediately. Not only that, Ellen Page was going to play Beth. Unfortunately, Ledger tragically passed away in 2008 before production was set to begin. Number 9. Beth's lipstick had a deeper meaning. Every detail of this miniseries was intentionally crafted, even down to Beth's makeup. Specifically, the different shades of lipstick she wears throughout were carefully chosen to reflect her growth and evolution. Well, don't you look lovely. The shoes are a little big. Room to grow, dear. Room to grow. From the muted to non-existent color she wears in her youth, to the bolder and more confident looks as she grows up, her lip shade tells her story. And near its conclusion, the color resembles her adoptive mother Alma's. This was done on purpose as a sort of tribute to her. Through these choices, viewers can see with their own eyes how Beth changes throughout the course of her life. Sometimes makeup speaks louder than words. So good I am. Number 8. The Harry Potter Connection Does it work? I don't have to use the queen. Move. I'll just cover it with the bishop and... Move. If you kept trying to put your finger on where you knew the actor who plays Harry Beltic from but couldn't quite figure it out, there's a good reason. The actor, Harry Melling, is best known for a role he had when he was much younger. Harry Potter's cousin, Dudley. Make it move! 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 He's asleep! He's boring! Coincidentally, Anya Taylor-Joy, the actress behind Beth, is a big fan of the franchise. I know. You've read it. No. But I have my own copy upstairs. Well, some of these are going to be new to you. She said that she actually picked up English through the books as a kid. And like many of us, she was hoping to get a Hogwarts letter. While it never came, she did get to fangirl over Melling, who she described as, quote, a gentle, beautiful human who listened to her rave about the wizarding world. We wonder what Hogwarts houses they'd be in. Number 7. Anya Taylor-Joy was a rookie at chess. What's your rating? I don't have a rating. Have you ever played in a tournament before? No. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm sure. The actress who played prodigy Beth Harmon didn't actually know anything about the game upon which the series focuses when she was cast. I knew there were pieces, I knew there was a board. Um, but that's actually kind of what was awesome about getting to do this, was that I got invited into a very secret world. Some people might see this as a setback, considering the show's emphasis on chess and Beth's incredible skill level. What are you doing? I'm playing my earlier games. What on earth for? Looking for weaknesses in my play. I see. And? There aren't any. However, Anya actually views it as something that helped her do the role justice. She said in an interview that, quote, Beth is discovering the world of chess, and I could bring that awe and magic to it as well. Essentially, coming into it with fresh eyes helped her bring authenticity and a sense of wonder to the role in an organic way. What was your plan? 
to beat you? I don't know what it was. Exactly. You're still just improvising. I just wiped you out five times. Number six. The actors really played the matches. And then I saw what it meant. With the pawn gone, I was open to a rook bishop mate because of the bishop on the open diagonal. I could protect my retreating knight by moving one of the rooks over, but the protection wouldn't last. Every time you see a chess match happening while you watch the Queen's Gambit, know that it was real. There were no fancy tricks involved here, just the actors learning the moves beforehand and executing them. This is true even for the speed chess matches that took place in the story. And those times where the camera's focus is on the characters' faces instead of the board were no exception. There was still a strict pattern and choreography to follow. The 2014 film Pawn Sacrifice inspired creator Scott Frank to use this storytelling technique. His goal in zeroing in on faces was to give the matches a unique energy that was conveyed through the actors' expressions. Jesus Christ, Harmon, you're humiliating my rook. You won't have to suffer much longer. It's all quite impressive to watch. Excellent. What a brilliant recovery. I resign with relief. Number 5. Red-Headed Beth Red hair is a staple of Beth's character. It's an expression of her personality and changes as she matures. But what if that boy were a girl? A young, unsmiling girl with brown eyes, red hair, and a dark blue dress. Daniel Parker, the hair and makeup designer for the show, explained that they used wigs to be able to achieve the numerous styles she dons. Interestingly, much of Beth's aesthetic, and namely her hairstyle, was based on actress Natalie Wood. As for hair color, Parker, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Scott Frank all envisioned Beth as a redhead. Now, most players, they lack the courage in their convictions. The key is to not be tentative. You have to play with absolute confidence. You know, I can tell in the first move whether someone's got that or whether they don't, just from how they move that first piece. And they did so before even talking to each other. In fact, one of the first things Anya said when she first met with Scott was that she felt Beth should have red hair. The first thing I said to Scott was she needs to have red hair. Like, that was just something imperative to me um, because I wanted her to stick out like a sore thumb wherever she went. It was clearly just written in the stars. That is Ruski a little bit Parisian cute. Number four, Benny's real life counterpart. The Carol Khan defense, genuine bummer. What's wrong with Carol Khan? It's all pawns, no hope. In a show that centers so much of its story around the world of chess, it would be hard to completely ignore great real life players. What's his name, the one you told me about? Bobby something? Benny Watts? Yes, him. No losses, but one draw. While the story itself is fictional, Benny's character was inspired by Bobby Fischer, a chess prodigy and grandmaster who won countless matches and tournaments from an early age. But the game wasn't what was most important to Thomas Brody Sangster, the actor behind Benny. He said that for him, quote, it was about figuring out what part of me I see in Benny. Only at that point do you make a character true and believable. Judging by the final result, we'd say he did a great job. Did you ever go over games in your head? When you're alone, I mean, play all the way through them. Doesn't everybody? Number three, Beth's femininity. It's mostly about my being a girl. Well, you are one. Shouldn't be that important. Chess, especially in the era when the show is set, is a world dominated by men. Why do they put the girls together? They're not supposed to, but if you win, they move you up. Because of this, deliberate choices were made to showcase Beth's femininity. She's unafraid to be herself. This is reflected in her dazzling outfits, for instance. It's also shown through her poised and gentle physicality. Of this, Taylor Joy said, quote, I wanted her to have a very distinctive way of moving the pieces that was still, whilst very quick and ruthless, undeniably feminine. Beth doesn't have to choose. The actress's background in ballet certainly helped her find those movements. Ms. Harmon, what do you say to those in the Chess Federation who accuse you of being too glamorous to be a serious chess player? I would say that it's much easier to play chess without the burden of an Adam's apple. <laughs> Beth lives in a sexist society, but she refuses to give in to the gender norms of the time. She embraces both sides of herself and is better for it. Et que le, ou la, meilleur gars. 
Number two, the moves were orchestrated. Enfrentándose a una presión implacable en el tablero, Harmon le estaba pisando los talones desde el principio. Lo hizo sobre todo con peones y aplastó su posición como uno podría aplastar un huevo. The chess moves on the show were anything but random and were in fact carefully choreographed like a dance. As for the hypothetical scenarios Beth visualizes, they were also all real possible plays. No movement was left to chance, thanks to experts Yori Kasporov and Bruce Pandolfini, who planned the sequences and guided the actors. Interestingly, the creator reportedly asked Kasporov, a chess grandmaster, to play Borgov. He refused and signed on for this role instead, where his knowledge was put to good use. Harmon's response was a complete deviation from the album, which must have surprised him right back, whilst allowing her to get out into the open. Now, the two of them can fight it out from here with their own wits. In an interview, Anya Taylor-Joy was adamant that this attention to detail was a crucial part in making sure they did the game, and the people who love it, justice. If you're a chess aficionado, you won't be disappointed. It's an entire world of just 64 squares. I feel safe in it. I can control it. I can dominate it. And it's predictable. So if I get hurt, I only have myself to blame. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Anya Taylor-Joy signed on before reading a script. Chess isn't always competitive. No, but you play to win. Yes, but chess can also be... What? Beautiful. The actress who skillfully brought main character Beth to life joined the project early on. So early on, in fact, that a script didn't even exist yet. The mind behind the miniseries, Scott Frank, sent her the Walter Tevis novel on which the show is based. Upon reading it, she immediately knew that she wanted to be a part of telling the story on screen. She said in an interview that she literally ran to see Frank, and that she felt really, quote, passionate about the character and story. Like the excitement level that I had of just how much I connected with this woman, how much I wanted to tell her story. And something that I think is really important is I did think I could tell it right. The fact that the narrative goes beyond just Beth being an excellent chess player really appealed to her. And we're glad it did, because it's hard to imagine anybody else ever embodying Beth as perfectly as she did. It's your game. Take it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.